Hey, horror fans, once again, it is me, the Horror Miser Money G. It's time to review another horror movie. It's time to review the movie, Come Play. <laughs> now, Come Play is a 2020 American horror film. It was written and directed by Jacob Chase, based upon his short story called Larry. Now, the film stars Julian Jacobs, John Gallagher Jr., and Ainsley Robinson. I think I pronounced his name right. <laughs> Now, in this movie, a monster named Larry manifests itself through smartphones and mobile devices and is determined to make an autistic boy named Oliver his new best friend forever. Ooh. Now, as a parent, I had some difficult times in raising my son, but I can't imagine trying to raise a child that is autistic. Uh, so stress it takes to raise an autistic child can either pull a married couple together or a family together or actually pull them apart. In his first full-length film, writer-director Jacob Chase gives us this tale, but added a monster into the mix with the horror film called Come Play, which is based upon his short story called Larry. Now, we're introduced to Oliver. He's a non-verbal autistic boy who communicates with an iPad. 20th century first, 20th century, uh, 20th century first. <laughs> I'll get this right. It's the 21st century, people. His parents, Sarah and Marty, are struggling trying to raise him. He has no friends, and he is bullied in school. No one likes Oliver at all. Poor Oliver. Now, while playing on his smartphone, an app appears, a short story called Misunderstood Monsters. It tells a story about a creature named Larry, and he's looking for a friend. No, not Chucky. No, no, no. Get the monster stories right. Come on, people. Now, after reading parts of the story out loud, weird shit starts to happen around Oliver, and it seems that Larry is determined to make, his, make him his best friend, no matter the cost. Yes, right. If you mess with Larry, he's going to get you. And you're not going to like it. Oh, boy. <laughs> now, when you first look at the premise, you believe that this is your typical creepy monster film that we've seen plenty of times before in, these, in this particular setup that we have here. You see, you have a disabled child, parents are struggling, and here comes the monster trying its best to take the child away because it feels as though... You're neglecting it because of his disability, and I'm going to do right by this child. But the parents realize that they will work together, kick the monster's ass, and save their son. Yay, parents, yay! Uh, nope, that's not how this story is. Yes, there are some elements of the plot of the film, but the film dwells more into relationship between Sarah and Oliver than more about what the monster Larry is trying to do with Oliver. One of the interesting things that Chase uses is the different dynamics that Sarah and Marty use in dealing with Oliver. You know, see, Marty likes to play with him and shower him with gifts and tickle him and have fun, while Sarah has to deal with the aftermaths of Marty's outbursts, his lack of communication. And she worries she's not doing enough to make him happy. We see this aspect right around the first, second act of the movie where we see Sarah struggling with Marty when he can't communicate because he can't talk. But then Marty comes in, he tickles him, he saves the day, he plays with him. And we can see the stress that's happening between Marty and Sarah because they have both different ways of trying to deal with Marty's autism. Now, I'm sure most people who've seen this movie, movie will compare it to the Babacook, Babadook. Uh, since we rarely see Rally like we barely saw the Babadook and the creature in the Babadook. However, Chase makes sure that Larry is frightening and scary, especially during the sleepover scene, by scaring the crap out of boys. Not that these kids deserve it, but they kind of did. But I just like that scene during the sleepover where we see how we actually don't see Larry in real life. But if you take the app and see him, you can actually see him in this real creepy scene. And it scares the shit out of the boys, which I thought was a very effective scene right there. While both films do use books, Chase decides to add modern technology for Larry to travel in, which means there's no escape for Oliver. doesn't matter what, where Oliver goes to. He can throw his cell phone away or his smartphone away. There's still the TV apps. There's still the monitors. Everywhere that he goes, there's a place where Larry can go into. Uh, we see that especially during the third act. Now, Chase does a good job and paces the film, focusing more on the relationship between Oliver, Sarah, and Marty and the effect Larry has on them. There's one particular scene where obviously we feel as though that we think that um, Sarah isn't believing Marty when Larry makes his presence known during the sleepover and Sarah believes that it's Marty's fault. But obviously when she has her own confrontation with Larry and the same thing with Marty, he thinks that Sarah's going out of her mind. But then he has his own confrontation with Marty then they realize, uh-oh, 
we're really we're really something's really wrong here. I like that aspect of the film. Uh, Chase does a good job in keeping Larry in the dark, using sounds and light to create the tension and suspense you needed needed to make Larry the monster that he is. We never really see the full Marty effect, uh, even in the third act when when uh, Larry comes into this world. We really don't see the full creature. We see him in the shadows. There's a nice scene where we see both Sarah and Oliver are standing behind, and we see shadows of Larry going back and forth. It's a great way to create the monster without him being seen. Julian Jacobs from the TV show Comedy Community is simply wonderful as Sarah. Uh, she gives Sarah the strength, frustration, and love that a mother should have when dealing with a son like Oliver. John Gallagher Jr., he's okay as Marty. While he plays the good parent, <laughs> he does what is necessary to raise Oliver, even if it means he has to leave Sarah because of their disagreements on how they feel that they should deal with Sarah. But uh, he does what he necessary. He's not necessarily a bad father or a bad husband. It's just that the stress of trying to deal with a autistic son, uh, unfortunately, decides decides it's too much for their marriage, so they decide to separate. And you really got to give props to child actor A. C. Robinson who plays Oliver. I mean, he does a fantastic job of showing the frustration frustration Oliver has with communicating his encounters with Larry. Uh, especially learning a secret regarding a friend of his and dealing with Sarah. There is a plot that's revealed I was right around the third act of the film. It's like, oh shit, that's something I didn't expect to see. And that co sort of comes into play of how Sarah tries to deal with Oliver as opposed to how Marty deals with Oliver. It's something that you really don't see that much of in a movie like this, but similar to the Babadook and same here, it's focusing more on the relationship between a mother and son and a father and son dealing with an autistic child as opposed to dealing with the monster. The monster is just another obstacle that's in their way. Now he does all this without speaking a word and doesn't overdo it to the point where he becomes annoying. No, he doesn't make a lot of noises. He really does something with his fingers because autistic kids, they're, they don't want to you know, have a lot of stimulation. If they have too much stimulation, then they'll go crazy. And again, I love how Larry Chase's use is Larry. Uh, he uses both practical effects and CGI's, making Larry an intimidating and scary looking creature, especially to a child. I don't think a child would ever want to see this, this thing walk up and, and walk up to you and just not really speaks, but it's, it's very frightening for a kid to see something like that. Also, while Chase uses typical scare tactics, he doesn't use cheap jump scares. Now, some people might say, well, they'll, you does do some things. There's a scene in the parking lot, which I thought was your typical hide the monster thing that we see before, but it's more effective because we actually care about the characters, and I thought it was a very good, uh, good thing. Also, I'm going to let boring people, this film is not like everyone, just like the Bible book, some people might find the film boring, there's no blood, there's no guts, so if you're looking for that, this is not your movie. Now, what I when I I truly did like the film was as decent storytelling, effective acting, and a frightening looking creature. And you gotta give Jacob Chase his uh prop for his first full feature length film. I think the sky's the limit for Jacob Chase. He did a fantastic job, and I'm looking forward to see what he has in store for us. And you gotta give credit. I really did enjoy Come Play. So I'm going to give Come Play. Three out of my five bloody gold coins. Give it a three out of my five bloody gold coins. Like I said, I really did enjoy the film. Again, this film is not for everyone. You're not going to like it. Some people might compare it to the Bob Duke and might call it boring. But I did enjoy it for what the movie was, what the movie and the message that uh, Jacob Chase was trying to say in here. So, horror fans, have you seen Come Play? What do you think about it? Did you really did enjoy the film, or did you didn't like it, or you hated it just as much as you hated the Babadook? Uh, leave your comments in the comment section below, and tell me what you thought about Come Play. And that's my review for today, and my video also. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and then, uh, <laughs> if you did like this video, please like and share. And if you're new here, please hit that subscriber button and ring that notification bell. That way you'll be notified anytime when I put up new videos such as this one. Once again, my name is Lamont Smith, better known as the Horror Miser Monty G, and always remember that horror rules. And I'll see you in my next video. I am out.